Do you ever wonder why some photos look so captivating but yours never seem to reach that same professional look and feel? Well, for the past 11 years, I've taught my students five simple techniques that turn even the most boring and bland landscape or seascape photo into a head-turning masterpiece. And in this video, I'm sharing these techniques and how you can use them to give your photos the wow factor that makes them stand out from the crowd. But first, one of the big differences between pro and amateur looking photos is that the pros manage to make it clear what the main elements in a photo are. They don't let things get lost against a busy background and they make sure that everything that's supposed to be part of the composition is clearly communicated. But this can be hard to do when a scene has a lot going on, like in this seascape. Luckily, three of the five techniques that I'm sharing here are specifically designed to overcome this problem so that you can make what's important in your photos really pop. And we're starting with technique number one, which lets you easily highlight key objects and elements in your photo so you can make them stand out and appear well-defined, even when that wasn't possible in camera. Now this technique, along with all the others that I'm sharing, is easy to do, but as I've said in recent videos, it's not that the pros have access to better techniques than anyone else. The difference is just in how they use these same techniques. So the technique here is simple. For this wave that I want to highlight, I'm going to add one curves adjustment layer that brightens the image and one that darkens it. And then I'm going to hide them both by inverting their layer masks. And from there, I'm going to brush into each one's layer mask to reveal the brightening effect in some areas and the darkening effect in others. So you get the basic idea, but the idea behind the idea is knowing what parts to brighten and what parts to darken. So with this wave, for example, the white water that's rolling in is a great leading line that adds to the composition and helps lead the viewer's eye towards the sunrise in the distance. But the thing is, it does get a bit lost against the backdrop of a turbulent sea. So by lightening the light water here and darkening the underside of the wave, we see that we can really start to make it pop and become more 3D-like. And the leading line begins to emerge from the busy background. Now I call working on the contrast in large objects like this, macro contrast adjustments. Enhancing the contrast of these larger objects by brightening the light sides and darkening the darker sides. So when thinking about how to do this in your photos, think about what the important subject or elements like this wave are and make them pop, baby. Now the next technique that I'm sharing uses the same simple curves method to brighten and darken, but there's a subtle difference in how we're going to use it and to what ends. So technique number two isn't as much about enhancing contrast as it is about shaping and focusing the light in your photos in a more global sense to draw the viewer's eye towards specific areas. And this is in much the same way as a vignette attempts to do by making a weird dark circle around the edge of your photo. So you can think of this technique as like a manual alternative to that, with the difference being you can shape light in a way that actually makes sense. So to use this technique, you want to subtly darken the edges of the image in areas where it makes sense to darken. So for example, the bottom edge of the sand here, and over towards the already dark left and right sides of the image, maybe in the top right of the sky over here, but not this top left, which is already just naturally darker due to the thick clouds. And then the flip side of this technique involves using these same curves adjustments to lighten the image selectively towards the middle of the scene where we generally want the viewer's eye to be drawn to. So this next technique is one that's going to get you out of trouble if you've got a shot like this, where you've pointed the camera into the sun and either you didn't capture bracketed exposures or even with bracketed exposures, the sun was just so bright that you've ended up with some pure white overexposed pixels in the image. And it's a really important problem to solve as well because nothing screams snapshot or amateur more than a big blob of damaged and lost pixels right on the horizon. Here's a simple and subtle way to fix it. Step one, you'll add a new empty layer to your image and set it to the darken blend mode. Step two, select the brush tool and then hold Alt or Option on the keyboard to enable the sampler tool and then sample a light color from the sky as close as possible to what this blown out area should look like. And then step three, with a low brush opacity, paint this color into the blown out area. And then step four, if it looks too much like you've just painted a big blob of color, which you've done, then just try first reducing the opacity of the layer to blend it in a bit better. Step five at this point, if it still looks too much like a big blob of color, then you'll wanna add some detail into it to recover that. So. You can do that by cloning some nearby clouds into that area. To do that, add a new empty layer in the darken blend mode again, and then clone some of these similar clouds into that patch, and then reduce the layer opacity as necessary to blend it in. 
Now this next technique is one of my secret weapons when it comes to giving an image a three-dimensional feel that makes it really pop off the page or screen. And you can think of it like a really micro detailed version of technique number one, only this time we're zooming in to enhance the contrast of smaller elements within the frame. The key difference here is that we want to enhance the existing light that's being cast onto things rather than using the technique to pick and choose what looks lighter or darker. So you can use any brightening or darkening adjustments you like to use this technique, but for this example, I'll paint with a black or white brush into an empty layer that's in the overlay blend mode. So kind of like dodging and burning. And we use a black brush on about 10% opacity to darken and a white brush on 10% opacity to brighten. So I'll speed the video up here because it can take a little while to cover a large area. But the key idea behind this technique is that you want to be brightening the faces and edges of things that are already lighter and darkening those that are already dark. And working at this level of detail, you might not even notice the total effect as you're going along making these small adjustments. But when you check the before and after version, once you've finished and turn this layer off and on a couple of times, you're really going to notice how much it makes a photo pop. Now, even if you're using all four of these transformational techniques that I've shown you so far, there's one mistake that could easily have you fall at the final hurdle. With technique number five, you don't have to worry because one of the biggest telltale signs of amateurish editing is when you leave dark shadows underexposed by mistake. You know, I'm not talking about intentional silhouettes. I'm talking about these small dark areas like under a rock, which you either don't notice are completely black or you think they're small enough that it doesn't really matter. Either way, they do matter because neglecting these underexposed bits shows a lack of attention to detail and it will cause your images to look over contrasty, over sharpened and just generally crunchy. But the thing is, even if your raw file doesn't start out with those parts underexposed, if you're not paying attention to the edits that you're making as you make them, then it can easily happen by the end of your workflow. But the good news is that you can easily avoid this problem entirely by paying attention to your shadows after each and every adjustment that you make. And if the adjustment causes the shadows to go too dark, you can easily fix it in its layer mask. The key is a specific technique that lets you target only those darkest shadows and adjust them separately from everything else in your image. The normal process for doing this can be quite long and complicated, but I've come up with a way to do it 10 times faster and easier than normal. So Watch this next video to discover what it is and how you can use it to enhance the quality of every photo you edit in Photoshop.